look crazy as hell in this picture. The hell you getting us into, Trump? I saw this picture. I'm like, what in the hell? Who, who is? He looked like he ready to take out a whole mall full of people with that look on his face. I don't know nothing about this man. So, let's check out the news. See if I can find out some more. <laughs> Alrighty. Hello, everybody. I'm Lisa Booth, along with Julie Banderas, Charlie Hurt, and Dr. Mark Siegel, and this is The Big Weekend Show. We begin All tonight right. with a Fox News alert. President-elect Donald Trump has just nominated Cash Patel for director... Okay, that's a better picture. ...director of the FBI. <laughs> Trump made the announcement on True Social just moments ago. Okay. During Trump's first term, Patel served as the chief of staff at the Department of Defense. Uh, so, Charlie, not too long ago, um, Donald Trump said that Cash's new book, uh, talking about how he's going to completely eradicate the deep state and also firing at, mm. firings at the top ranks of the FBI would sort of be the blueprint for what he would want to do in his new administration. I, I mean, the deep state needs cleaning. Uh, the Department of Justice and the FBI also need some firings and some reform mm. as well. So what do you think he'd be able to accomplish as FBI director? Yeah, well, uh, obviously, Cash Patel has a unique observation uh, uh, and history with the FBI. He has been on all sides of the FBI. Mm. Uh, he, okay. uh, working for Devin Nunez in Congress, of course, had oversight of the FBI. Um, and yeah, he don't look crazy in none of these pictures. That, that, that picture is the first one I saw, man. I was like, what? <laughs> and made, made life uh, difficult for them. But that was, of course, before he realized just how corrupt the FBI is. He's also been a target of the FBI. Uh, and the reason he was a target mm -hmm. of the FBI is because he uh, pressured uh, the, the release of information exposing that the FBI had illegally spied on President Trump's campaign and during his presidency. And the idea that this was, uh, this was you know, only in Washington would this be shocking. Um, he has experience, he knows where the bodies are buried, and uh, uh -huh. you will not be able to fool him out of actually doing some of the cleaning that needs to be done. In the book is Government of Gangsters. So let's look at some of what Cash has done. He served as the U.S. National Security Council official senior advisor to the acting director of national intelligence also as the chief of staff to the acting united states secretary of defense all during the the trump administration okay uh, so julie this is someone that donald trump trusts right yeah. and we saw him Familiar face the deep him. state during his first right. administration we all remember the russia hoax we also remember the 51 former intelligence officers who lied to us telling us that Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. So it's important, particularly in, in, in the role of FBI director, for him to have someone that he trusts. Yeah, and there was a history of yes. a lot of deep state, if you want to talk about the deep state politics here, but in the FBI in itself, just trusting the FBI. I mean, we have not trusted him in past administrations, the FBI in general. Uh, the directors and former directors and also people, members of the FBI, have been leaking information to the press in order to advance their political purposes. And the FBI should not be a place of politics. I mean, the FBI has a role, and the FBI has really lost a lot of credibility. I mean, the, the FBI does not of credibility so i think the you know he obviously there's going to be backlash everyone's going to criticize um yeah i know someone that joined the fbi and uh, uh had a quick talk with him before joining uh, i was just like you know like don't become a, a mindless drone uh, just a soldier that takes orders you know what i'm saying because like you know i ain't go into it with him because he's uh, I really couldn't talk to him about a lot of conspiracy theory and stuff. And it's all coming true now anyway. He just didn't believe like that. Either he, or he didn't want to. I just, I just, I, you know, he's a friend, you know, and it's like, a <laughs> but I was, I, I just knew how he, he was. And I'm sure now since uh, joining, I'm sure he's learned a whole lot. I'm sure he's learned a whole lot, but, um, you know, uh, he, yeah, he told me he would, you know, hope that, well, you know, that he could be a voice of reason. So I, I hope he hasn't gotten himself caught up in anything, but, um, yeah, like I just heard too much about, you know, all these three letter, you know, agencies and there's no way I could join, no way I could join when I'm knowing that I know that a lot of crooked stuff is happening, but, um,
anyway the left that Donald Trump has yet once again picked another, you know, conservative who happens to also be a friend, who happens to be an ally. But that's kind of what you need in this White House, because if you don't pick people that you trust, then that's when the leaks happen and that's when the backstabbing happens. And for once, he's got people surrounded by him. And I know that Trump is very much a loyalist and he believes in the people that are loyal to him. And so you know that you're not going to be getting that with Cash Patel and with a lot of other nominees that he's chosen to uh to elect. Yeah, and this is someone who's also faced two assassination attempts as well, yeah. right? So he really needs people to trust his inner circle. I think mm -hmm. that the key points that have been made, he's cleansing. He's cleansing the FBI here. He's cleansing Department of Justice. He wants loyalists. You talk about loyalists. Cash Patel, of course, to add one point here, was the one who said those documents were declassified, period. And he stood up for Trump. He took the Fifth Amendment. That is something Trump remembers. With all the, with all the attacks that Trump considers to be politically motivated, Patel stood up for him. Has a great background. Got his, got his JD over in, in the UK. Uh, is a very, very smart operator. Has been in the Department of Defense, as was said. Department of Justice. All right, so all this stuff sounds good about this dude. He just looked crazy in that picture. I said, <laughs> he's highly skilled. Well, and I like, especially as someone who distrusts government to a great degree, I like the fact that Trump's surrounding himself with people who also don't like the government very yeah. much as well, and who've also been targets of the government as well. All right, so let's now head down to West Palm Beach, Florida, where Mark Meredith has been following this story very closely. Mark. Good evening. You're right. I sure have. I'm glad I didn't make dinner reservations for tonight because these nominees are coming out at a pretty much rapid pace. We've also learned that there's going to be a new nominee to head up the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency. Mm, but uh, okay. I have to go back to the main story at this hour is that President-elect Trump plans, once he makes it to Washington, to nominate a new FBI director who would then, if confirmed by the Senate, take over from Christopher Wray who filled the job after James Comey was fired back in 2017 as well. Now, Trump has been talking about trying to shake up the FBI for, for years, and obviously Cash Patel, if confirmed, would be able to do that. He has spoken out quite a bit about what he says is a deep state, un deep state unelected cabal of tyrants who he thinks wow. are trying to sabotage those that have been elected, including wow. President like Trump. Wow. There have been rumblings that Patel could end up at CIA. Uh, the FBI post was also being out there wow. as we talked about. But we didn't expect this announcement tonight. Now, one of the big questions going forward is what kind of reception he will get. Cabal wins flawless victory. Up on Capitol Hill. We saw what happened after the Attorney General nominee, Matt Gates, uh, was announced. Uh, Trump said he was going to stick with him, that he felt like he was very confident in him. But then after uh, a few days up on the Hill, gauging the uh, reaction from lawmakers, they realized that they weren't going to be able to get their nominee through. I don't know what kind of reception Cash Patel is likely to get from the Senate. Obviously, the, the Republicans hmm. are counting on that Senate majority that they're going to have come January. That's going to give them a little bit more leverage, obviously, than they would have right now with the Democrats still having that very uh, small percentage where they can flip the chamber. So let's talk about what we're going to see next. One, we're going to have to ask about what about Christopher Ray's response to all of this right now. Okay. Obviously, he's not going to be uh, Trump's pick going forward. My understanding is that he had said he had not planned to go anywhere after he had already been confirmed back, he said, in 2017. So he's going to simply be out of a job, but whether or not it's going to be Patel or somebody else going forward still yet to be seen. If it's okay with you, I'd like to read what Trump had to say about his nominee. He said he wants him to serve because he's a brilliant lawyer, an investigator, and an America first fighter who has spent his career exposing corruption, defending justice, and protecting the American people. Now, okay. what we will also be looking to see is how, if confirmed, Patel would want to shake up the FBI. Obviously, there's been so much focus on the FBI's role back in 2016 as it began investigating Russiagate. And we have seen, of course, those hearings that have happened for years where people were trying to find out who was trying to control some of the uh, behind-the-scenes action as they were investigating Trump. Trump making it very clear he's not happy with the FBI, and this certainly would be a shakeup. Guys, back to you. It sure is, Mark. Thank you. A little, a little breaking news to keep things exciting around here. Uh, you know, Charlie, how do you think Cash Patel being picked as FBI director? How, how do you think this will be received on, on Capitol Hill? You know, what does this fight look like for Trump to get some of these guys through? Oh, there, there will definitely be a pretty good freak out on Capitol Hill. <laughs> among the Democrats. You think? Uh, I don't think that there will be as much resistance. About, you know, the problem for uh, Matt Gates was that he started finding resistance. Freak out! Freak out! Freak out! Ooh, yeah, dig it! It's among Republicans, uh, and it uh, had l less to do with um, his history of work 
and more to do with with other things. I, Cash Patel doesn't have to worry about that. He's good. By the way, this shirt I'm rocking. I had a few people that were mad that I was wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt because, you know, Disney woke, messing up everything. You know why I got it? Classic. This is a message to anyone, especially in Disney. Get back to classics. Get back to what worked. Get it? Mm. You know, but he, there will be a massive freak out over the fact of what, what he stands for and what he promises to do. What I love about this is, you know, and I can't wait till this whole administration get rolling. Oh, I, I'm I'm so curious to see what happens. You you, you know, there are lots of flaws with Matt Gates. Uh, but one of the great things about picking Matt Gates is that we were going to have confirmation hearings that were going to be be offended. Put a, we're going to put the Department of Justice on trial, and we were going to have a good two weeks of forcing the press to talk about how corrupt the Department of Justice has become, and how much uh, the Biden administration and the Obama administration, quite frankly, uh, politicized the Department of Justice to go after their political enemies. The great thing about Cash Patel is, and, you know, we lost that when Matt Gates walked away. But we're going to get it now. When Matt, when Cash Patel goes before the United States Senate, the entire thing is going to be a trial of the Department of Justice and every single thing that they have done to become more politicized and to become weapons against uh, any anyone that uh, the Biden administration or the Obama administration deems as a threat. And that is a magnificent thing. Yeah. You know, Dr. Siegel... I feel like you know, this was a mandate for, for Donald Trump, right? You know, I mean, the House and the Senate, they, they rode his coattails to victory. So I think he should have the people around him that he wants and that he trusts. And that have great talent. You know, and the other thing about Cash Patel is he's a writer and he messages and he helped Trump run Truth Social. And that and that children's book he wrote, The Plot Against the King, which mm -hmm. made fun of the whole idea that Trump was targeted in the 2016 election, took his side with a children's book. He does it mm. all across the way, and I think that Trump is picking him, A, because of his talent, and B, because of his loyalty. You know, Julie, big picture, you know, looking at some of these uh, nominees and these cabinet picks, what does that tell you about what kind of administration we're going to see from this next chapter? I think that we're going to have more honesty and transparency, because there was one thing That's that what I'm thinking. The, the former President Trump did, and that was be transparent. And this administration has been not. There has been something. Is there something on her nose? What is going on with her nose? Is that just me? Or is there something going on here? Lack of transparency in that. And just, I want to talk about Cash Patel as the man, not just of the professional. I mean, he's super distinguished. He is so smart. He's so qualified for this job. So nobody out there on the left can say he's not. But he's also a good person. Yeah. He's an honest man. He wrote that children's book. Uh, he's hysterical. <laughs> I love him. His personality is amazing. He's a real person. But he also, like a children's book, he is actually a co-author. The two of us wrote for the same children's uh, book publisher bring huh. books and so i do know him quite well and i think okay. he's an amazing character and i think he's going to be a huge asset and i think it's so important to know that he's taking good character people and putting them into the white house that we can trust that we know that they're not going to tell us bold faced lies every single day well that'd be nice hard-working people <laughs> and i don't think you can really argue against that well and charlie i mean americans overwhelmingly remember the days of when you just believed everything on the news you remember those days wanted change, right? They, they didn't like the direction this country was heading in and, and they wanted change and that's what they're getting. Yeah, there were obviously key issues that, uh, you know, that, that went into this past election. Uh, immigration was one of them, the economy was another, but she, first and foremost, and the, the entire, you know, you know, we have talked about having like a third party or a nonpartisan candidate for, I don't, for as long as I've been covering politics. Donald Trump is the first person to come along who is a nonpartisan candidate, who is a third party candidate, and he has crashed both parties. And the reason is, is mm. exactly what you just said right there. People are ready for change. They want a scalding change to occur in Washington. And obviously, uh, you know, Donald a Trump himself scalding would say that change. there were mistakes he made, chiefly about scalding the that he hired in the first term. He's not going to make that mistake this time. And I think that, you know, he views his reelection as being a starting point. You know, not a victory, but a starting point for making transformational change. Bringing in fresh talent. He, Trump doesn't really have a rearview mirror. He's not going to go back yeah. in time to somebody that he thinks, well, maybe I'll keep him, maybe I won't. And and I, I absolutely agree with Julie that it, it, the, the, 
the bad look from the last administration of the outgoing administration of camouflaging everything, a sick president that was hidden from the public eye, except from physicians who knew. I mean, we need fresh transparency. By the way, get Julie Van there. Well, he wasn't hidden book. that well. Brave books. <laughs> also, good. I'm glad you brought up the fact they did, they did lie to us about. We have a president currently in office who <laughs> dropped out of, via X said he wasn't equipped to run for president, but yet he's still in office. It's real quick, Julian, yeah. then we gotta go. No, I mean, it's crazy. And I mean, and if you look at the past administration and, and you wonder why he's changing and making these rules, drastic changes is because that's what America voted for. They did not vote for Kamala Harris because they wanted change. Even Kamala Harris couldn't accept that this country wants change. So I say go for it. Cash Patel has been very vocal that he wants to absolutely just upend the FBI, just turn it on its back, and he should because the FBI has been corrupt for way too many years. Totally corrupt. Great guy. Yeah. I'm. There we go, baby. Well, folks, seems like uh, they have nothing but good things to say about the man. When I was flipping through Twitter, earlier saw that damn picture but i also saw a quick clip of him on somebody's show talking and i was like okay okay i was like because that picture is alarming <laughs> i was like all right he's talking rationally i guess he's just a little too intense in that picture <laughs> must be friends with homing <laughs> Post comments down below. Let me know what you think about this. Those of you that know what's happening. This is a good choice. Is it not a good choice? Not a good choice? Why? Is it a good choice? Tell me why. Give me any extra info you feel I need to know to understand this situation better. And we'll see y'all in the next video. 10 million subscribers. Woo!